So uh, I'm very glad to uh, be participating in this session on extreme events, and I'll talk about some work that's ongoing at Hubbard Brook. If I could have the next slide, please. And um, so uh, Hubbard Brook has always worked with with co lead PIs, and so Gary Lovett has retired, and so it was it was Lovett and Groffman for a while, and now um, I'd like to introduce our new co lead PI, Pam Templer from Boston University, <coughs> and we're looking forward to to many years of Pam's leadership of the site. Uh, our site, like the other sites, has been focused quite a bit on uh, increasing diversity, equity, and inclusion. And the Hubbard Brook Research Foundation, which is a friends organization for Hubbard Brook, has been leading really novel events that have been attracting a diverse and interesting group of participants. We had a live virtual community conference about the UN climate change process. We have a Young Voices of Science program, which is attracting a great group uh, of young scholars uh, to the program. And so we're quite excited uh, and, and we've got these events that are helping us with the DEI and A activities. Uh, we also have a new project um, funded through the Ecosystem Studies Program on declines in nitrogen availability, which I, is gonna underpin some of the work uh, that I'm gonna talk about today. Uh, and another thing we've been thinking about at Hubbard for quite a bit is the, the move from long to very long-term ecological research. And I wanted to highlight this 100 year paper on the biogeochemical history of Harvard Brook as a, as a notable milestone in, in that effort to think about very long term ecological research. So as we all know, extreme events are, are, are super hard to study. They're, they're rare, they're, they're complex events and they have complex effects, um, but they've gotten even harder to study because the, the nature of the events is changing. The frequency and the intensity of the events is changing and that complicates things. Um, what makes it even harder uh, is that the ecosystem response to these events is changing. Uh, and that further complicates uh, evaluating the importance of extreme events um, in ecosystems over the long term. So I wanted to give three examples of this latter phenomenon about ecosystem response to disturbances changing from the work at Hubbard Brook, uh, response to soil freezing events, responses to ice storms, and then responses to extreme uh, tree fall and clear cutting events. So we've been studying soil freezing events at Hubbard Brook since the 90s, and there were some natural events, and we have made experimental manipulation soil freezing events since the 90s. And these, uh, in the 90s, produced very impressive increases in nitrogen losses, hydrologic losses, and gaseous losses. And you can see uh, in this slide, um, these are manipulation experiments. So we shovel snow out of the woods, the soil is frozen in the winter, and the following summer, we get these very marked increases in nitrate leaching and phosphate leaching, acidification of soil solutions. These are big, big disturbances. But in the, in the 2000s, as we continued doing these manipulations and we had some natural uh, soil freezing events, we, we got no response, a very marked uh, change to something that used to, you know, and, and the experimental manipulations are very controlled and we use the same methods, but we don't get the same response. Uh, in 1998, we had a, a massive ice storm in the nor in northeastern North America that produced really large increases in nitrogen losses at the watershed scale and at the plot scale. Uh, we started to study those in more detail. We did a series of experimental ice storms in 2015, and they produced no such response. Again, uh, an event that used to produce a response, and now it doesn't. So, um, and so we hypothesized that the systems are not responding the same as they used to because they're going through this process of declining nitrogen availability, or we could call it nitrogen oligotrophication. Um, and, and we think this process is driven by a variety of factors. Certainly there have been marked declines in atmospheric nitrogen deposition in the Northeast over the last 20 years or so. But at the same time, there have been increases in atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations and increases in growing season length. There's been deacidification, which increases decomposition and carbon flow into the soils. And all these factors are, are increasing plant and microbial demand for N at the same time that input uh, is going down. And so now if you disturb a system, you just don't get nitrogen losses following disturbance like you used to. And certainly that's a good thing. Um, it's, it's good for ecosystem productivity. It's good for water quality. It's good for greenhouse gas fluxes. Uh, their concern though, uh, is if you mobilize a bunch of nitrogen uh, with a disturbance event, it, it facilitates recovery. And so there's this interest in determining, are we, are we having slower recovery from disturbance events in this new nitrogen poor world that we live in? Uh, another thing that we'd like to re revisit is, um, recovery from extreme disturbances. So in the early 60s at Hubbard Brook, they did these rather um, rather extreme clear cutting experiments where the forest was cut down, all the regrowth was inhibited for three years by the application of herbicides. Uh, and 
And if you look at the forest now, we still study this forest almost 60 years later, it doesn't look really much different than any other 60 year old forest in the White Mountains. And it's an example of remarkable resilience to an extreme uh, disturbance event. But the question is, would we get the same response if we did that experiment today? Uh, we, it's not, the woods are not the same. There's been 50 years of acid rain, there's been climate change, there's been this nitrogen oligotrophication. Uh, and this question of, of, of changes in ecosystem response to disturbance is a, is a, is a topic very important topic. Uh, it's one that I, I think we're really poised to address um, at Harbor Brook and elsewhere in the LTR network. Thank you.